All right, so all you want is a good night's sleep, but when you lie down on your side, the side of your hip hurts or even your inner thigh hurts and you just lie awake feeling this gnawing sensation in your hips. You cannot sleep because your hips hurt side sleeping. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why this happens. I'm gonna talk about my own personal experience with it and I'm gonna to explain to you how I solved the problem myself and it didn't involve any drugs, surgery, pills, or whatever. It's simple, it's exercise that you can do at home. So watch through to the end of the video so you understand how to fix your hip pain while side sleeping. Before we jump into the exercise, I wanna remind you not to get caught in rips, which is rest, ice, injections, pills, and surgery. We wanna look at functional training. We wanna train the muscles to be able to stabilize the body and move the bones of your body in a pain-free range of motion. Sleeping on your side requires the muscles around your hips to maintain a balanced relationship that allows you to sleep without pain. If your hip muscles are too weak, which is often the case for people who spend all day sitting, then you will find that the muscles complain at night when you lie down on them, slightly stretch them, and ask them to relax further than they already have been doing all day long. This is all part of the idea of ATM, always think muscles. Getting caught up in medical diagnostic names like labral tears and arthritis and FAI or whatever will often lead you into a path of becoming a mental and physical victim. And then you get caught in rips. So remember to always think muscles. And if you need more information about this perspective, be sure to check the description box for some helpful links. Now let's talk about some exercises you can do if your hips hurt side sleeping. All right, so we're gonna lie down on your side on the floor, preferably with some sort of cushioning since your hips are probably really sore and achy when you lie down on the floor. Why do I know that? Because I've been there, done that. My hips used to hurt a lot. They would ache when I was lying down on my bed and they would ache and just feel really uh, uh, whenever I lie down on a hard surface like an epoxy garage floor. So when you're doing this, use some sort of cushion to make this tolerable and know that it will get better as you get your hips stronger. And just for the sake of proving that I can actually lie down on hard floor, I'm gonna do it without the mat. So I'm gonna lie down. You're gonna bring your knees towards your chest. You're gonna have your knees bent and then you are going to be lifting the top leg up towards the ceiling, nice and slow and controlled. Right now I have about a 90 degree bend. This is roughly the position you would be in when you're sleeping on your side in bed. If you wanna use a pillow, you can. My arm makes an awesome pillow. So we're going to just go up and down, nice and slow, trying to control for any weird deviations. We don't want your leg to move in ways that you aren't deliberate about. It's just straight up like this, okay? Awesome. So you should feel the muscles right back here. So you can see the seam of my pant here. The muscles on the posterior side of the hip are back here. My glutes, my glute medius, right? My glute maximus are there. Just gonna keep going until I feel them get tired. Then I'm gonna switch sides so that my right side gets a little bit of rest. Go to my left, same deal, and gonna slowly come up slowly come down. The slower you go, the harder this is, and the more fun you have, because hard work is fun. Okay, so you do this until this side gets tired. Around five to 15 repetitions, generally per set. And then you go back to the other side. You can do another set in that same position, if you want. And then of course, do the other side. The next variation of this exercise is to then open up into more hip extension. So now my thigh is in line with the rest of my torso and I keep the knee bent and I'm still raising up and lowering down, trying to allow the knee to get as low to the floor as possible. When you first start doing this, you may find that you are super stuck. That's where I was. I would just get to here and I'd be like, what the heck? Because this area just would not lengthen enough. These muscles couldn't function with length, they didn't have strength at length. So it's okay, but just know that you're aiming to be able to get the knee real close to the floor, even touching the floor 
once you get it real good and flexible, okay? So again, five to 15 repetitions, get some fatigue, and then you're gonna go ahead and switch to the other side, lying down. This knee is up towards my chest. This knee is down so the thigh is in line with my body. And then I'm going up and down. This should feel like the side of the hip. So it's not so much posterior hip. It's going to be more directly under the crest of the pelvis. So it'll feel kind of like it's sort of centered on the seam of the side of the pant right in here, this area. So it's getting some glute medius and some glute minimus teaching the hip abductors to fire. So you can do another set of that for both sides and you will feel like your hips are probably a bit on fire and engorged with blood. Why am I suggesting hip strengthening exercises when your hips feel tight when you go to sleep? The reason is muscles can feel really tight when they get really weak. Most people are not overusing their side hip muscles. Most people are not doing exercise that challenges the side hip muscles to be strong and short. Most people just have super weak, flabby side hip muscles that aren't doing anything. So then when you lie down, those really flabby hip muscles are not able to provide the stability and the sense of integrity that you need to be able to fall asleep on your side. By doing these exercises, you're building strength, you're bringing blood back into these starved muscles, and you will discover that your hips start feeling better pretty quickly. When you're just starting these exercises, I would suggest doing these just two days a week, two sets for each exercise variation. A Monday, Wednesday, or Monday, Thursday schedule would work really well. And if that feels fine, you're not getting super sore, you can bump that up to three days, possibly even four days a week, just depending on how it feels for you. The goal is to give enough training stimulus to your hip muscles without getting yourself crazy, crazy sore. When you're a total beginner, it's very likely you're gonna get pretty sore, so you wanna just ease yourself into it. If you need resources to help you understand why muscle soreness happens and what you can do about it, be sure to check the description box for helpful links. Now, what about inner thigh discomfort when you're sleeping on your side? Let's say you lie down, and you're side sleeping, and the inner thigh just feels like, oh, it's really tight, or it feels like something's being compressed in there. There's a thing you can do for that too. So this hip exercise starts in the same position. We're just gonna take the top leg, plant the foot down. Hand is just gonna be here to help us stabilize. This leg, you're going to lift up towards the ceiling. This should feel like you're using the muscles of the inner thigh to create what's called adduction, hip adduction, pulling the thigh bone towards the midline. You can adjust your angle a little bit. So if I face up a little bit more, I might feel a little bit more of the adductor engagement. If I lean this way, I can increase the demand a little bit more here. So you just have to play around a little bit. Find what feels weak. Maybe going out this way, you feel it more in the adductor at the lengthened position and then it struggles to come up. That's great. Find the struggle and work on that. Make that challenging range better. Keep working on it, smooth it out. If you see it's like shaking and wobbling, that's a sign that your inner thighs are super weak. The only thing that's gonna make your inner thighs stronger is constant practice of that same motion. With this exercise again, sets of five to 15 are good and doing them on both sides. Two sets is a great idea and just pair them up with the other exercises I already showed you. That'll give you a nice start for building balance in the outer hips and the inner thighs. Once you're familiar with the versions I've already shown you, you can also play with angles. So if we're down into this first exercise, I've shown you being in a 90 degree bend, I've shown you being in hip extension, and you can also start playing with intermediate angles to give yourself challenge in those different positions. So. You can go here in that mid zone. You can go here in the mid zone. You can even pull your knee up way up towards your face because you sleep like a really weird human being who likes to pretend they are stuck in the womb again. So this is fine. Any of these angles, totally fine. And the same goes for the inner thigh exercise. If you wanna 
bring that knee away from your face and go more into hip extension and work on it in funky angles, that's totally cool too. There's no wrong answer with that. Just get used to the first variations I showed you and then work on these other ones as you find and feel weird little dead zones. And finally, if you want to up the demand and really build strength and control, get yourself some ankle weights or even use lightweight plates and find a way to get them onto your leg. So ankle weights, they even sell thigh weights with a longer strap, but for me, ankle weights work. Lie down, do the exact same exercise, just like so. And you will find that adding resistance adds difficulty, which makes the muscles stronger, which will make you more resilient, it will improve your balance, and it will make it easier for you to sleep on your side without hip pain. And if you're getting hip pain side sleeping in your inner thigh, then you could just take that weight, stick it in there, and same exercise. Now you've just got a little more work for your hip muscles. These couple exercises I've shown you will really help you if you've got hip pain while side sleeping. They will build your hip strength and that will make things a lot more comfortable when you sleep on your side. To improve other aspects of your life and to make greater gains in your hip mobility and hip strength, I really suggest you look at other hip exercises. Things like hip thrusts, glute bridges, stretching your hip flexors, strengthening your hip flexors, all of those will make a big difference in your overall quality of life. I have a beginner hip mobility program that helps you explore your flexibility and strength deficiencies. So if you're looking for a systematic but practical beginner's introduction to hip mobility and hip strength, be sure to check out the Healthy Hips program, which I'm gonna link down in the description box. And if you're somebody with hip pain and you've been told it's hip impingement or FAI, then be sure to check out the link for the FAI fix, which you'll find down below as well. More articles, links, and resources are down in the description box, so be sure to check that out. Karate kick the like button on this video, then do a side kick to hit the subscribe button, and then punch that bell notification icon so you don't miss out on any future videos. I'm Matt Shu from Upright Health, reminding you that pain sucks, life shouldn't.